Jeff Clavier from SoftTech VC. Welcome, Jeff. So the floor is yours. So mobile apps are really, really important. It's one of the exploding markets that we see in the US and in Europe. And we have a great panel for you today to talk about that. And as you'll see, we'll have three very important application developers sandwiched between a carrier and a headset manufacturer. So I'd love to get my panel on stage, please. So Christophe Francois from Orange, Andrew Lacey from Tapulus, Andrew Fisher from Shazam, Sean Peshavar from SGN, and Bjorn Figos from OVI. I'm going to sit here. Thank you. So, guys, welcome to Paris. Welcome to the web. I would love to have about 90 seconds of each of you on who you are and what your company does. And as, as we um, discussed in the backstage, let's have a few statistics about what you've seen over the past year so that we sort of explain to these people why the opportunity is huge. Bjorn? Yes. So, bonjour tout le monde. Hello, everybody. Bjorn Wigfors, I'm heading the OV marketing communications, so the services leg of the Nokia business. Um, and in the past 12 months, um, one obvious observation and two a little bit more and, and obvious and selfish from a, from a Nokia perspective and then maybe two a little bit more generic from an industry perspective. And the first one uh, was the selfish one and that is huge uptake on the amount of active services users in Nokia. So uh, as of today we have 77 or over 77 million active services users. In fact, last week we added 2.3 million active services users, um, which basically almost makes up to four new users per second. Um, also, I think the, uh, the uptake of our new services have been individual have been very, very nice. So if we start with the obvious store, obviously it's been a rocky road, but we're seeing some great momentum coming up. We're approaching one million downloads per day. Uh, and as a soundbite as well, uh, in the past month, we had 100% growth in users and 100% growth in downloads. So we're really scaling up that one. And bear in mind that we only have about 16 countries now. Actually, we just added the latest countries last week. And so uh, it promises to be a good 2010 for Movistore. Is, is there any trend as to which is most popular for you in terms of category? Sorry? At this point? Which, which category is most popular? It's actually quite evenly spread. So it, of course, personalization, games, mm -hmm. um, uh, utility applications are very, very popular. Um, and, and of course, um, because it's categorized very neatly with, with games, audio, video, personalization, it brings a lot of that, you know, different um, content up front. So, so that's Great. why we can see that it's spread very well over. Cool. Andrew? Um, and then um, on Ovi Mail, it's another interesting one. It's, it's actually so that we have a very accelerating growth on the amount of uh, Ovi Mail users. So we're, we're um, reaching to 4 million users within the last year. Uh, so uh, it's a very rapid uh, addition. And the additional millions of users obviously follows also with the amount of services users. But enough about that. Then the two obs other observations very quickly. I think this, this 2009, I think, is marking as the year when really the web as we've seen it with social networks, the social networking boom and the traditional web is starting to blend with the real world through location. And we've done some exercises with Facebook from you, whom you will hear later uh, around the live cast. You can come and see the demo, by the way, downstairs later on. Um, but of course, a lot of our application uh, providers are doing similar things, Star starting to blend in the, the location into the inter in internet content. So that's a really, really interesting, interesting observation. But I think that will take you know, um, uh, you know, ramp up very, very nicely in 2010 as well. And then the last one, uh, the potential in emerging markets. So I'll go back to the Ovi Mail. We're actually connecting millions of new users with their first digital identity in the terms of an Ovi username and password or an Ovi Mail address. And so, and if you can provide applications that are really relevant for these users and affordable, the scale is, is, is huge and the potential is huge. And I think we see some promising signs in that in our Nokia Life Tools um, um, work as well. Um, Nokia Life Tools being a hyper-location sensitive service for instance for crop prices, uh, for uh, you know, English word of the day is actually one thing, a little bit of entertainment, but things that actually can change the lives of people and in 
because it's so relevant to them and to their livelihoods. Bjorn, I'm going to cut you because that's a very long 90 seconds. Yeah. Um, Andrew, Deputos. I'll try and be quick. Um, so my name is Andrew Lacey. I'm one of the co-founders of a Silicon Valley company called, um, called Tapulous. Uh, we founded the company when we heard that the platform, the iPhone platform was going to open up and we thought that the iPhone wasn't just another mobile phone, but it's a totally new, new sort of handheld computing device in your pocket. When we raised money, sort of our objective was, let's get a million users in 18 months. And now we're sort of 18 months later and we just passed um, over, or we've gone quite a bit over 20 million um, user downloads now. So uh, most people know our flagship app, Tap Tap Revenge. It's on one in three iPhones and iPod Touches. And we're a small team of around 20 people, but we're a profitable company. So we're already sort of, I guess, showing that it is possible to make a real business in this uh, new and emerging market. And it's only going to grow. And your business model? Our business model is based, uh, we're experimenting with everything. So we do advertising, we sell, um, we sell paid applications, we sell in-app uh, digital song downloads, and we're selling virtual goods. So for us, very much, this period is one of experimentation and seeing what actually works. And for full disclosure, I should mention that uh, my fund has invested in Tapulos. It's one of the 45 deals I've done in the past two years. Um, but that'll give you a hard time anyway. Uh, Andrew, Shazam. Or oh, Shazam, how do you pronounce it? Good morning. Uh, has anybody heard of Shazam or have it on their iPhone? Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, we're a music recognition service. You point your, your mobile phone at a piece of music and it tells you what's playing. And then we go on and allow people to, uh, to share the experience on social networks and buy the content and uh, give additional information. Um, we are across every mobile platform. Um, so we're in 100 and, more than 150 countries in the world. Um, we're on more than 350 carriers. We've been seeing, in terms of adoption, we've seen 500,000 new users every week since February of this year consistently. And that number's ramping up, and I think that shows uh, the opportunity around mobile. We think of mobile as being approximately four times the size of online, and that's why it's such an important category to be in. Um, and uh, um, our business model is moving to a freemium model, so some element of the service for free and some element paid for. And so you have... Um 350 carrier relationships, do you actually um, get on their deck you know, to be downloaded or are you on the App Store as well? Um, so for people in the room, I'd advise them to start their conversations with the handset manufacturers. People like Nokia, for example, have, have an amazing ability to put you across a large number of carriers. But at the end of the day, the specification on a handset is really selected by the carrier themselves. And so you have to choose which carriers are most important to you and decide if it's a European play or a North American play or a global play, and that will influence where we'll, you go. We'll get back on that as to how you actually manage to manufacture all the applications and versions and testing to get on all those handsets. Sherwin, SGN. Hi, my name is Sherwin Fishervar. I'm the founder of SGN. Started the company in March of 2008. Um, just as uh, Andrew talked about, we're big believers in the future of mobile gaming. Um, we launched our first games, uh, you might know some of them, Eyeball, uh, iBasketball, iGolf. Um, iBowl is on 24% of all, all iPhones. Uh, and our, all of our games are in one in three iPhones today, but um, 18 million uniques. Uh, we, we're basically making a huge initiative around 3D games uh, and a 3D engine that we've built over the past year that we can do console quality, multiplayer live social games um, on, on the iPhone. So if you go to SGN, Com, you'll see a video of Skies of Glory that's coming out hopefully uh, soon this month, and that'll give you a sample of the, the kind of graphics capability that we're able to uh, accomplish on, on the iPhone. So we're very excited. So you started as a, a company building games on Facebook, right? That's where, that's, that's where we met, and you sort of switched to mobile. So can you sort of comment on that? Yeah, we, we just think that uh, mobile gaming is going to take over. Uh, over the next two years, there's kind of an echo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I, I, you know, probably it's about a year behind Facebook now that we have in-app purchases on on, on iPhone. Um, it's just going to scale. And if you look at Mary Meeker's presentations on the ramp up of iPhone sales, it's it's faster than even the iPod. Yep. Um, so we're very excited about that. The, the the huge thing was being able to do in-app purchases. So now we're going from a game like Fast, uh, which we sold 700,000 units, average price of $3, uh, with no free version. All of our next games, like Skies of Glory, 
um, and our future games in the next few months are all going to be free with in-app purchases in them. So Christophe represents Orange, and yesterday we had a discussion about you being a carrier, and you said, no, 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 we're a service provider. So can you comment on that? Yes, good morning. So my name is Christophe Francois. I'm in charge of the mobile multimedia product and services at, at Orange. So that's covering basically um, all the mobile application that we are developing and publish, publishing uh, under Orange brand on uh, numbers of, uh, of different uh, stores. So we are publishing, obviously, on the App Store. And we're also uh, embedding our own application on our uh, devices. So we call those devices uh, signature devices. Those are um, uh, devices that we are customizing, working with all our partners, device manufacturers. We're shipping about something like 100 new model each year um, and something like 35 millions. Uh, we are covering um, actually 30 countries, serving 130 million customers. And uh, the few things I wanted to share about the, the dynamic of this market, which is really huge, um, maybe are the following. Today we have about 20% um, of our user base which are actively using mobile data services. And uh, the um, actual uh, mobile data traffic has been multiplied by four within, four within 12 months. So it's, uh, it's a huge, huge growth. Obviously, the new, um, the new device platforms like uh, you know, the smartphone, the touch screens, uh, with the HSDPA network is, uh, you know, channel a lot of this, of this growth. I think the other thing we've been, um, we've been seeing as a publisher um, of mobile application is that um, this is creating uh, a new relationship between the consumer and, uh, and the publisher. We've been distributing actually mobile games you know, for five years, uh, Java games in Europe. We are the number one uh, distributors of those uh, mobile games in France and UK as, uh, as an operator. So we see the growth and uh, the, the great potential. I just want to give you a couple of numbers here. Um, so we started, um, we started in France um, to use the um, iPhone SDK very early in the process uh, to develop with our R&D team uh, uh, our flagship applications such as uh, Orange TV, which is uh, a live TV channel. Um, uh, you can watch 60 uh, live TV channel on your iPhone uh, or live radio, which is an internet uh, radio aggregators. And for those applications, uh, we got uh, over 150,000 downloads just in the first couple of days. And uh, so that's been growing very rapidly, and that's just for France, uh, where we are distributing the iPhone. So it's not, mm -hmm. not a worldwide figure. But the point here is that um, when you have the right uh, content and the right visibility, you really get a, an incredible response from the consumer. And also what is really um, amazing is that you get an immediate response, right? Because you can see directly, as a publisher, what the, the, your customers are thinking about your apps. So um, for a company like Orange, it's something right, quite new because we have to, you have to react very quickly. Uh, but um, that's a great experience for us to be able to work with uh, also third-party application providers and um, uh, enable and distribute the application um, to our customers. That's a great segue into um, uh, the next topic which I wanted to, um, to go on, which is sort of the iPhone, the App Store, and the sort of revolution that it has created in the mobile world where you know, five, ten years ago, you had to have all those carrier relationships and those uh, business relationships with the handset manufacturers, and suddenly you have one design, one, one platform, and it gives you access to close to 100 million users, soon iPod and um, iPod Touches and, and, and iPhones. So from the standpoint of a, of a developer like SGN or like Tapulous, how do you guys look at this opportunity? Because obviously, you have a number of, of device manufacturers which have millions of users, other OS providers. Uh, you know, we talked about Android. What, how do you look at that term? Is that sort of something which is interesting, or you want to focus on the iPhone because you know you have sort of a, a huge playground? I mean, <clears throat> oh, absolutely. Right, right now, um, iPhone is, is massive, um, and we're very excited with the success that we've had on it. Um, we're building an, an Android team today uh, because in 2010 we think it's going to be uh, pretty interesting growth there. Um, but the vast majority of our resources is focused on iPhone. I think one thing that's going to change the dynamic is that you know companies like ours and others are working on cross-platform tools. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could build an application that could potentially uh, have the kinds of 3D graphics that we've built for the iPhone, but have that across Android, iPhone, and the web. Uh, so you have synchronized live games uh, and apps across all these platforms. That's where um, 
you know, we think there's a tremendous amount of potential in, in those types of platform tools. Andrew, any comments? Yeah, I would say to answer the first part of the question, not having to talk to carriers is fantastic. Um, it's lowered incredibly the barriers to building a business in this space. We are now, uh, I looked yesterday, we have uh, users in over 220 countries. Um, so I don't know how many carriers that is, probably 220 carriers. And um, we have not spoken to a single carrier once, I don't believe, other than sort of in passing at conferences and so on. And so um, it doesn't cost as much to get out there on the platforms. And your first hire doesn't need to be a biz dev person to talk exclusively to carriers, or you don't have to sell your IP to third parties who can kind of help you publish on their networks. I don't. The question of sort of other platforms, I'm, I think at Tapulous we're, we're very excited about Next Generation Mobile and we don't think that in the long term that would just be the iPhone. Although we tend to believe more in sort of competing devices rather than competing platforms. And I think Android is a very interesting space and I believe out of that space there will be other devices that are as competitive as the iPhone as a platform uh, and sort of a, uh, a, a, as a common base. We're not yet so sure. There's certainly a lot of issues already with fragmentation sort of on the Android platform. I absolutely agree. And, um, one of my favorite quotes was from Mark Andreessen when he was on the Charlie Rose show and uh, when he was asked about the iPhone and the Steve wormhole. Jobs was that uh, Andreessen said it, it was as if Steve Jobs uh, went five years into the future, stole the design and brought it back into the present. And I totally agree with that. If, if, if Apple hadn't launched the iPhone, we would still be waiting. Uh, the, the, so it's a movement that's going to affect every single company, every single developer space, and it's uh, it's it, it's something that, uh, like you said, um, everyone's going to follow that model, and it's going to be great for developers because it's freedom. I tried to do this on the Pocket PC of all things in 2001, built a 3D engine, built mm -hmm. a game called Argentum, um, and immediately saw that the model was broken. We mm -hmm. had to wait until the iPhone came to liberate us. So liberate us is fine. Um, Andrew, I'll get back to you, but I want to give Christophe a, a chance to answer uh, uh, Andrew's quote, which is, we don't need no carriers, right? We don't need you guys in, in the US, and, and to be honest, dealing with AT&T is just such a pain in the ass that you actually don't want to do that. So what do you tell Andrew, hey, work with me on Tapulos, and this is how we can be useful to you? Well, first of all, uh, welcome to Paris, and welcome to Europe. Um, I think that, you know, I've been working in the US for a while, so um, it's always interesting to um, to see what is the, the perspective from Silicon Valley about Europe. Um, here, it's uh, actually, if you're looking at Europe, it's, um, it's a very different market. It's a patch of different local market. And, uh, and of course, uh, I can see the benefit uh, from your perspective just to say, I have a single window, and with the, that window, I can address the, the world. Uh, actually, um, first of all, not all uh, the carriers are equal. Um, so, um, so what I invite you to do is to come on the, on the booth at Orange Boost and talk to, uh, to Orange Partner, which is our developer program, uh, so that we can, uh, we can see if we can find a way for you. The, the key points here is that, you know, what we are starting to see also as a developer is that there is an incredible uh, fight for visibility and awareness on those worldwide store, right? Because when you have 100,000 application on one single window, it's becoming quite challenging to get noticed, right? And if you're providing local services and you want to really serve the local business, then it's becoming quite a challenge. So uh, I will take and discuss more about this later today, but I think you know, there is a real opportunity to, um, to really enable uh, a much more local business. Uh, retailing is about being local, being locally relevant. We're gonna talk about location. I mean, all this is, is very important. The, the other point is about, is about the, the platform. So of course, it's, it's really great to have uh, a wonderful platform like the, like, like, the, like the iPhone, but I think we are in, a, in an incredible industry which has been you know, growing very fastly and has so much brain power and so much um, you know, breath that uh, we're gonna see several platforms. And, uh, and all users are not the same, right? Um, I mean, we know about mobile users. As I said, we are serving 130 million of them. And believe me, all of them are not buying iPhones, right? All of them are not that comfortable with uh, touchscreen. Mm -hmm. Some of them like library. Some of them are fond of Nokia devices. So um, I think they're gonna be an interesting, um, an interesting challenge moving forward is that from a developer perspective, if you have to, um, to find your way, you know, on the local windows 
of each of the local vertical store, worldwide based vertical store, is going to be a challenge for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of challenge we want to address with our partners. So Andrew, um, you made the decision to support a bunch of uh, hardware platforms, operating systems. You have a number of care relationships. You have 50 million users. Can you tell us how you went about, you know, which one you started with and how you deployed and what are your sort of operational challenges um, in a day-to-day -day basis? Well, um, a lot of people think of Shazam as an iPhone company, but actually we've been around in the market for seven years. So we got started four years ago writing applications on some of these other environments like Symbian, like Java, mm -hmm. like Brew. Um, so when people's uh, behavior changed and some downloading more applications onto their phone, we were in a really good position because we'd already built the platform, we'd already built the products, if you like. And we have over 12 million people on the iPhone, but we have 50 million users worldwide. So it's a very important part of our customer base, but you know, it's, not the, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's still not the majority of what we do. And we think that's really important for us in terms of our strategy, because our strategy is to be ubiquitous and get on as many mobile phones as possible around the world. And we're only going to do that by building relationships with the carriers and handset manufacturers. I think Tapulis has, uh, is a good example of a different strategy for people in the room to think about, which is to build a portfolio of products, which is go for one platform, build a core competence in your business, and build a range of products and publish uh, a lot of choices around one core platform. So it's a decision that people have to take here as to what their strategy is going to be to get started on mobile app stores. And the one thing that we would say about our relationships is that over time, it's going to come back to discovery, just as we've seen on the web. The hard part is for people to discover that you exist. And the, both the handset manufacturers and the carriers have the ability to put your icon on the home page of the device. And people will work that through, that whilst it's been revolutionary what Apple has done, and they've, they've transformed our business, um, it's going to be very important over time that uh, you, you differentiate yourself from the crowd and encourage your partners to help you raise awareness of your, of your business. And for most of us, we're small companies, mm -hmm. and we desperately need the marketing dollars and the ability to be preloaded on these devices by the carriers. And so is, is the iPhone the largest platform for you guys? Is, is the iPhone the largest platform for you, or is there like another device that is even larger? It's, it's not the largest platform for us. And in fact, um, you know, we're very delighted that we're being preloaded by Nokia on their devices as well. Um, Nokia ships over 450 million handsets every year. Mm -hmm. There's about 50 million iPhones. So um, if your mission in life is to be global, then you need to be identifying partners that really have a lot of penetration in the market. Can you give us um, just 10 seconds on how you had to organize in order to get all those, you know, all the support and development of those multiple applications across multiple handsets and multiple sort of operating systems? I think if you're going to pursue a strategy to be global, then you have to be fully committed, which means you, know, you need to prove out that your product actually works. We've seen that in terms of the users. Somebody uses Shazam on average eight times a month now, and that's, uh, that's improving consistently mm -hmm. as we add in more features. So we've gone beyond the, the novelty of the application and got into a utility application which has real value. And I think once you've done that, then uh, you can go out with a business case to finance, to venture capital companies, to other forms of finance, and build a team around this. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to go global, you have to resource for it. I mean, it's, it's harder than building a web page if you're going to go across these multiple platforms. So you, it's a conscious decision you must take in your Remind business. Remind us how much you raised? Uh, we don't actually put out in the public domain okay. what we've raised to date. OK. Um, so Bjorn. It's, I'll answer the question indirectly. It's over $20 million. That's a huge amount, but it's significant. Significant. So Bjorn, um, from the US perspective, we see you know, Steve Jobs, iPhone, App Store as sort of the na very natural um, step in the, 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 the mobile application market. How do you, how do you guys at Nokia look at, see this? And you've reacted by launching a very successful online store. Um, how do you think about the US market versus European, European market? The, the impression is that you're very strong here, less strong there. Um, how do you guys think about the world, and how do you want to try and convince someone like, um, like Andrew or, or Sherwin to actually get on your platforms? Well, it is true. I mean, obviously, for US-based companies, you know, Nokia is the main export channel for mobile apps to the rest of the world. That is a fact today. Of course, we, we're working hard to change that, but it's a fact of life. But a few sound bites uh, on, on that as well. Three million touch devices per month we're shipping. And you mentioned the 450 million devices per year. Obviously, we are focusing on basically three different platforms. It's the Series 40 for the lower end, where you can actually address the max market. 
then you have the Nokia Symbian and the Miamo. And I'll mention those two together because what we're seeing now is that the developer platform in Qt 4.6, you actually have the possibility to develop for both platforms. So the multi-platform offering is actually coming through now with Qt 4.6. That also includes Mac and Windows and embedded Linux. And so there's a lot of opportunity in that in terms of simplifying the work for you guys at Shazam when you're doing your development for us, uh, for, for our platforms. So I think that this is how we address the whole situation. And obviously then, it's not a US or non-US thing, but it is actually, we are totally committed in simplifying or as much as we possibly can the development of Nokia platform to basically make it possible for guys like you in Tabulus to basically de then deploy with less pain on multiple devices with some consistency in the development. So I think that basically wraps up our sort of response to this. And are there sort of any initiatives in the US to try and sort of regain some, some market share or get sort of carrier relationships? Because the one thing which I've seen is you launch really interesting devices, but they don't, they don't get carried by the, by the carriers, which means that the price you know, at retail is like 600 bucks, and therefore no one sort of buys them. Um, how do you guys sort of look at that? Yes, there is a strategy for that, and the work is ongoing. And I can't really comment more than that. But of course, it is a priority for us to regain that. And also, quite a lot of the word of mouth that is coming is coming out of the Silicon Valley. And of course, not being a strong place in that area actually affects our reputation, even though we are the leader in all other regions. Very so cool. that, that's a challenge that, that we can recognize. So moving on to the, um, to the App Store and the change that happened very recently, which is now you can actually have in-app commerce for free apps. Um, that's a huge enabler. Uh, is there anything else that you guys would need or that it would be great to have in order to go even further in terms of the um, e-commerce the, the e or the revenue opportunity? Um, <clears throat> why don't I share uh, some of the metrics from, we did some Please. experiments on, on in-app purchases and uh, in the current version of Fast, which is the, the jet fighting game, we did a very limited test. We released three jets that you could buy. It's 99 cents, $1.99, and $2.99. Um, how many of you think that the, 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 the majority of people bought the $2.99 versus the 99 cent plane? <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, two thirds of the purchases is $2.99, so, uh, which is pretty interesting. Yep. Um, and you, also, you also sort of price tested the game itself. You started at $9.99, and yep. then you, you drop the price, and then you, do, you did some sensitivity analysis. So where did you end up, 199 or? Um, so the average price at, in those fluctuations, that was a one-time thing, because we wanted, I really wanted to test mm -hmm. the, the, the pricing fluctuations and the effect on demand. And we got a lot of really interesting data. And you grossed a million dollar on this game, if I recall? Yep. In how many days? Um, about nine, 90 days. OK, um, 90 days to a million dollars grossed, right, so. for um, one game. The, the, the bigger thing was the conversion rate on the uh, in-app purchases um, initially was about 6% of all you know, users that were logging in were buying one of these planes, even $0.99, cents, $1.99, $2.99. And uh, as we tweaked it and, uh, in terms of you know, presence and where, where that offer was, uh, was, where the planes were, where you could purchase it, um, what we found was it went from 6% to... Um, about eight, eight to ten percent. So eight to ten percent conversion for an in-app item inside of a free game is tremendous, um, and it, so it points to uh, the vast potential for for in-app purchases and in, in, in kind of the the ecosystem that's been created. So you know you hear a lot about Facebook games and and you know how much they're making, but I actually uh, the reason we're focusing so much on 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 the iPhone is that it's in your pocket, it's with you all the time. And um, you know, so we, we really believe that those numbers are going to catch up with Facebook within the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. Andrew, any catch up? Yeah, I tend I tend to believe. I mean, if you look at the uh, the App Store versus uh, the, the Facebook app market, and there's some structural changes going on on the Facebook side that's making apps less attractive to people there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely believe that will um, that the the iPhone market itself will pass sort of Facebook in terms of monetizability of of the app. Uh, market. I would say some observations that we've had um, that were also really interesting to us and just shows that the market is still really evolving. Um, we had exactly the same experience. We sell in Tata Revenge 3 um, songs in two packs for 99 cents and songs in six packs for 2.99 and we have sold a greater absolute number of six packs than two packs, which sort of is counterintuitive as well. Uh, 
our conversion numbers are around 15 to 20% of people that have tapped their range three have actually purchased in-app content, um, which is uh, sort of compares favorably to what you see on the web, which is more to three to 5%. Yeah. Um, so here we're looking at a, I guess a market of consumers that are much more willing to spend um, on, you know, and, and part of that is mobile and part of that is the frictionless sort of spending environment that Apple has created. Uh, I still think it has sort of a long ways to go. The in-app commerce experience is not perfect um, and, will, and will improve, but certainly I do agree that with the recent changes that Apple has introduced that we are going to see sort of a more dominant model being this free to play uh, and, and then premium upsell of content and virtual goods inside the app. We see much, much, much more of that. So you asked also about uh, where, where, we, where we would kind of look at uh, you know, potential changes that could help accelerate. Yep. I, I think app discovery is an area that is, is, is yet to be fully mined. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is, is having more of a social glue inside the infrastructure of the apps themselves when you're building the apps. Um, you know, something like Facebook Connect obviously helps, mm -hmm. but we need something uh, you know, over time deeper than that and uh, to make it you know, easier to, for people to discover apps that they're interested in. And App Genius and all of that helps, but it, over time it, it, it's gonna be optimized and, and calibrated and, and I think you know, as it gets more efficient, um, it'll affect the numbers even better. It's true that the, the, pool, the pool created by being on the top 10 most popular you know, games or whatever on the App Store or being featured or recommended by the Apple staff is, has a huge effect on your downloads and today it's sort of not clear. Even, even if you look at the evolution of the numbers, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not clear what moves you know, those apps um, you know, at all. So clearly for carriers, that's sort of one of the advantages that you can offer, which is, hey, work with us and we'll try and promote you and put you sort of not on the decks, but you know, high up on the App Store or have those sort of relationships you can, uh, you can offer. Yeah, I think this is, uh, this is one of the key advantage of being uh, multi-local is that um, uh, we, can, uh, we can really create um, uh, catalogs which are uh, really um, tuned to the, the local markets and, uh, and so uh, uh, provide uh, more space for, uh, for animation of the catalog. And, uh, and so again, I will, um, if you want to, to hear more about this, uh, you should come and visit us at the booth here because you will see how we are we're tackling this, this issue. Um, just coming back on the, on the App Store from a, a publisher standpoint, mm -hmm. huh? I think you know, what we have observed is that indeed um, when we are publishing as Orange and we are publishing um, you know, Orange TV, um, we are able to leverage a huge marketing machine with our you know, physical retail shop or um, our brand advertising and this is pulling a huge amount of downloads as I said you know, in the first hours. Uh, and that's, that's an interesting challenge from a, uh, a publisher standpoint because you better make sure that your application is really ready to sustain the load in the first couple of hours if you're going with that strategy. Uh, because you, know, you don't have a second chance to make a, a good first impression. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, um, very important point. But the other point, of course, is that um, if you, you can't afford to have this uh, kind of, uh, of marketing muscles because um, you know, either you are an operator, uh, you're working with the operator or, or you're premium, uh, you, know, you have a premium brand, then, uh, then you have to use other methods to get up to the, um, to the charts. Mm -hmm. And um, so of course, you know, if, you are, if you are fortunate or lucky, uh, you can create some buzz, you can be part of the, of the staff picks. But you know, one of the observations that, that we are making is that uh, if you look at the statistics often, you know, the way, as you mentioned, to get noticed and to, to get back on the chart is really to play with prices and so price elasticity. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, what this is creating, we believe, is, uh, is a marketplace where there is significant price erosion or risk of price erosion because there is so much content out there just on one screen that you know, the only way, if you don't have the huge marketing power to create that pool, the only way to get noticed is to lower your price. And we think that this is not necessarily the best thing long term for the, the developer community and the content community. So we're trying to, uh, to create um, a slightly different model, leveraging different platforms for different uh, audience and playing local. So that's, that's our bet. I wanted to ask Andrew from Shazam's perspective. You, you mentioned you, want, you were gonna go 
on a freemium model. So clearly, on the App Store, it's easy. You know, you have the ability to do in-app commerce. What about the rest of the platforms? How will you sort of um, do that? That's, that's a very good question for where the market's at right now. If you're going to go outside of a particular App Store, you need to be aware that not all the billing solutions are the same. And so if you want to cultivate a business model, you may not be able to replicate that consistently. Mm -hmm. Even within one country across different carrier networks, it's not consistent. And you do have to factor that in. So, but so uh, one thing I would say is that I think a lot of people, I think iTunes is a bit of an exception. I mean, in the music market, it accounts for 70% of mm -hmm. sales in North America. So it's a very trusted brand outside of the network. In Europe, I think people trust their mobile phone billing. Mm -hmm and are very happy to undertake commerce over the cell phone and over the cell phone network because there's that, that inherent trust factor. When you go global into other territories, it becomes more complex and challenging in terms of do people actually trust putting in their credit card yeah, information or is there yeah. other, another billing mechanism? But the market is moving incredibly quickly. I think we've seen the app stores, we've seen this huge amount of creativity and very compelling apps for the consumer mm -hmm. And the next big wave will be around billing and consistent billing across these different storefronts. Can we get, um, so Bjorn, mobile payments, mobile payment infrastructure, uh, relationships across you know, carriers and, and, um, and uh, operating systems, are you guys sort of providing something so that you can have one solution that can be replicated across multiple carriers? Absolutely. So, uh, of course, if we take the example of the Ovi store, we are absolutely working with the operators to do both the integrated billing and then the SMS prepaid. Um, or, or, or pay, pay to bill, mm -hmm. uh, and we're doing that in dozens of cases. Um, and of course, we're looking at every different kind of monetization met method that there is, uh, and building that into the store functionality going forward. Okay. So, Orange? Yeah, I think uh, the, the point about um, the billing relationship and the, the service, the after sale service relationship is extremely important, at least in Europe. Um, as you said, you know, very rightly, the, um, the App Store case is a very unique case because it's all started with iTunes and uh, with the, a very large uh, install base of people who trust Apple as a brand. Mm -hmm. And that's a very specific case uh, in the industry, uh, quite unique. And uh, on our side, you know, we are, we are um, you know, billing customers and, and uh, getting the trust of the customers uh, for um, uh, a long time with 130 million. The, the uh, customers uh, in our in our base. The, the point which I want to make here is that when you're you're billing customers, you're charging your users for you know 50 euros a, a month or or even 30 euros a month for access and traffic, and you're providing after sale service on the device uh, on the on the access traffic. You know the user is also expecting that you know if there is any issue with uh, a two or three euros uh, purchase about an apps download, we have a responsibility and they're expecting a, a, a good level of service. So that's, that's you know, putting a lot of, um, uh, of, of pressure on us mm -hmm. in terms of you know, what, um, how we can go with the, the distribution and, and, um, and, and resale of, uh, of application. But that's also, uh, I, I think, providing a lot of confidence uh, and, um, and security for the developers because you know you can make sure that if you go on um, on on our application shop, then uh, you will benefit from from not only the visibility and the local visibility, but all the monetization machine, the after sale service uh, that goes with it. Um, time for prediction for 2010. Uh, mine is that we're going to see uh, an explosion of the location-based services, and location, location, location is going to be all about. You know, one of the, the key things we'll see in most applications, a lot of applications in 2010. Uh, can we get your guys' sort of input on that? You know, what's going to be big, you think, in the market? In, you know, we have one minute, so let's make it short. No, but I mean, I think that gradually we will see that the development opportunities and the, and the products that are done for Nokia devices, if I, if I take those, it will shift more from the native development and uh, from the native development more towards the web using standard web technologies. And so, uh, and we're addressing that by actually open, opening up then APIs towards the web, uh, sort of web-based um, applications. And I think that is going to be a, a, a major thing next year. Cool. To Andrew, quick. Yeah, I tend, so, so we're more of a sort of social gaming company on the iPhone, so what I tend to believe through all the experimentation that companies like SGN and ourselves, um, NGMoco and so on are doing, what I think we'll see in 2010, I hope we see is sort of 
this sort of Zynga slash Playfish moment where we sort of figure out how to really make serious money out of the platform mm -hmm. um, while still creating sort of an authentic and beautiful experience for the user. That's sort of my hope for 2010. That would be most welcome. Andrew. Uh, web toolkits and widgets, but um, for the audience, I would say, I hope we don't make this too complicated and people don't forget that if you make a great app, people will go out of their way to find you and to pay you for it. So make great apps. Chevin? Um, geolocation, absolutely. I think uh, Gowalla and Foursquare are going to battle over uh, yep. that as a platform. Um, and, and in the gaming space, I think we'll see the first social gaming companies uh, potentially go public. Um, and as Andrew talked about, we'll, we'll crack the code on how to really scale up the in-app purchase model. Final word? Yeah, I think so. Location, definitely location. Um, next year, I think we're going to see uh, other major platforms really getting very, very serious. So it's not just an iPhone play anymore only. Uh, and the third point about Europe is that uh, you will see uh, mobile operators, uh, starting with Orange, being more and more visible on the uh, uh, mobile application market to enable the mobile apps experience to our customers. Very cool. Join me in thanking our panelists. So Bjorn, Andrew, Andrew, Sherwin, and Christoph, thank you so much for sharing all bon. those insights. Bon and um, enjoy temps. the rest of the web. Thank you. Louis? Jeff, awesome panel. Thanks very much, buddy.